Hello everyone, this is Rain Weaver. It's been several months since I put a video out. I've had a lot of uh, family things going on. I've uh, endured surgery on both my feet. Uh, kind of been unable to get around very well. Uh, a lot of follow-up appointments. So I appreciate everyone who's been hanging with the channel and uh, kind of biding their time waiting for me to put out another video. Uh, I want to say I appreciate that and thank you. Today we're going to get into Foundry again. Uh, we've had a few updates since my last videos. Uh, right now we're currently on uh, the D&D 5th edition 3.1.0 on version 11, build 315. And what I'm going to do today is start a little series on how to create your own adventure module how to organize it set up your world uh i think um those of us that have foundry um have the concept of adding your photos your journal entries that kind of thing what i want to do is cover the organizational aspects of it how to assemble it all in a adventure module for publication so if that's something you uh want to uh, follow along on stick around and we'll get right back into it oh, don't do that again <laughs> oh, okay so you're gonna hold the goblin over your head and open the door back in the fuck up. What the fuck? Run, motherfucker, run! Okay, welcome back, everyone. So this is going to be part one on my series of creating an adventure module for publication. And uh, first thing we need to do is go to our game worlds, and we need to create a world. <clears throat> Uh, it can be a world module, adventure, whatever it is you're working on. Uh, I have an older module I put out called the Jagged Edge Inn. Uh, back in version 9 of Foundry, and it's not compatible anymore. And for tutorial purposes, I'm going to go ahead and do a revamp to it. Uh, you guys can follow along in the process. Um, and uh, it'll work exactly the same. So we're going to go ahead and enter our title. And um, <clears throat> it automatically sets the data path. We want it for the 5th edition system. I don't, I don't have a background image uh, to worry about at the moment. I can come back and edit this later. Uh, and this is a <clears throat> in system for the five whoop, five e d and and the game. Okay. Go ahead and create our world. Now, before we open, <clears throat> excuse me, before we open the world, we're going to go back over to our add on modules. And right below that, we're going to hit the gear icon, says create module. So we're going to make our module the same as our world. The Jagged Edge in. And this is going to be version 1.0. I'm going to go ahead and do 1. The package URL is the website where this is going to be at. I will edit this and add this in later. 
Package description is going to be the same as the world. A in system for I always do that. 5e game play. I think that works. And the minimum compatibility is going to be version 11. And we're not going to put a maximum compatibility on because we want it to continue further. Okay, we're going to add an author. Author number one is going to be my channel. Bumble effects. And my Discord user ID, I will add later. Uh, my email and my website, I will also add later. Now to meet to the now to the meat of the issue. So the first pack I want to add. I'm gonna add a pack. Is gonna be called Adventure. Okay, and a document type is going to be adventure for the 5e system. Okay, the next pack we're going to add is going to be our scenes. I forgot to capitalize that. And this is going to be a scene document for the 5e system. The next pack we're going to add is going to be our actors. And this is going to be an actor for the 5e. We're going to add another pack. This is going to be our items. Our items pack. For the 5e system. I'll make sure I get that check. And this one is going to be our journal entries. And you choose journal entry from the document type for 5e. You're going to find that you're going to add a pack for pretty much every one of these listed. Uh, I say so after journal entry. Okay, we're going to go to roll tables. And it's a good idea to do these, whether you actually use those particular areas or not. Uh, now, I'm going to leave out card stacks. I don't use cards at all in any of my games. Um... Playlists we're going to add for 5e. And did I do characters, scenes, actors? I did actors. Okay, so we're good. And we don't have a one for monsters. Oh, macros. That's an important one for 5e. Okay, and you'll find out you've got a pretty lengthy, lengthy list. Now, the adventure one is the most important. Make sure that you have it tagged as adventure. This will come into play later when we go to build our uh, adventure. 
So the relationships, we're going to first off add one directly, uh, D&D 5e system. It's a game system. It is required. Uh, I know my particular module that I'm doing um, is going to also have to have token attacher. Now, here's a little tidbit for you. If you are adding dependencies, which is what we're doing, relationships, if you do not have the module installed, it will not show in the list. Uh, so if you've got a lot of modules that you're working with, a lot of tools, um, you got a big list to sort through. If not, you need to add it. Now, I definitely need token attacher. It is required. Now, I also have another module that I have to use. Uh, let me find it. Tabletop RPG music. It is free. It is required. I always like to start at the bottom because most of my users are at the bottom. And I'll see it in a moment. I use Monk's Enhanced Journals and Styles. It ain't required. Uh, that's up to the individual. Monk's active tile trigger is a required. And I do believe that was the last one. Let me come back down. Oh, I take it back. The JB2A is a free uh, magic animation module from jb2 angels and bins i recommend that you use it and i do believe i'm going to have to require that on mine uh because i use some of their animation i could take their animation out of their package and put it in my module but you're basically taking somebody else's work and there's the licensing you know the ogo on it so by making the required modules dependent in your work, uh, then when you source one of their files, it's in their package already. These are all free, by the way. So once you do that, create module. Okay. And that takes care of that part. Now, the third step, this is also a very important step. So what we're going to do, I'm going to minimize. You're going to get a nice, crazy view of my desktop. Now, I have made a folder on my desktop called Resources. If I double click into that resource or folder, I have subfolders for my artwork, my icons, um, scenes, excuse me, sounds, tiles. That's an important one. And tokens. Now, if you need another file for housing any kind of work you want like traps or whatnot by, by all means do so matter of fact traps is a good one uh i'll just add that one okay so this is basically a generic folder that i use for all my modules so what i do is i right click and copy and i also on my desktop I have a shortcut to the Foundry folder structure. Um, 
It's uh, going to be on your C drive under your app data local. Sometimes app data won't show it's hidden. So you have to show high, show hidden uh, files. Uh, I'll pop back up. This is where it shows going to show. It'll show right here. Foundry VT take. And again, it's in your app data folder. If you can't see it, hit your view. And then it'll show hidden, hidden items, and it'll, it should pop up. But anyway, so what you want to do is go into your data folder, go into your modules folder, and you want to look for the module that you just created. Okay, the jagged edge in. Double click it, and you won't see anything in it at this point so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to paste our resources folder with all the subfolders into your master folder now we're going to come since we haven't started our game world we should be okay uh, if you've already started your game world and done a little work you need to shut it down restart foundry and it, it will pick up your changes so we're going to open up our game module and you get the foundry welcome screen we're going to go over to game settings manage modules you see i have no active modules and i do have a lot so what i'm going to do to start with tidy ui game system we're going to go ahead and save that and restart it if you don't use it i recommend that you do makes uh, life a whole lot easier it puts these boxes up here and gives you the options for uh, a lot of help categorizing them so we're going to come down to our module that we created the jagged edge in we're going to check it now right away you're going to see it has five dependencies that are required. These are the dependencies that you created when you made the module. Click yes, and it'll automatically enable them. Save and reload. Now we're going to get a pop up most likely. We didn't. Hmm, okay. Usually it pops up and says you need lib wrapper. Uh, It automatically checked it as a dependency, so that's a, sometimes it doesn't. Now, I need to take a point and point out here. Uh, when I started this video, we were on 3.1.0. There was a system update. We are now on 3.1.1 on version 11, build 3.15. Uh, that may have been a bug fix that they took care of in the update. So... This brings us right to the very beginning. Now, on your Compendium Packs tab, you will see your adventure, your items, your journal, your macros, playlists, roll tables, scenes, tabletop RPG music. Um... They're all locked. Uh, first thing we're going to do is unlock the scenes. So we're going to toggle edit lock. And you can open up your scene. Now we're not going to create a scene here. We're going to do it from the other tab. So we're going to create a scene. And the first scene, it doesn't matter what we name it because we're going to import a file for our scene. Uh, and it's going to change the name anyway, so I'll just put a question mark. And we're going to close it. Okay. We're going to close out our world. We're going to minimize. Now, 
if you've already got your steam material ready that's great uh, go ahead and continue if not you can pause the video do whatever you need to do now i have the jagged edge in icons already made folders already made and i believe i didn't do it in dungeon okay i did do it in dungeon okay so now my particular inn is a three-story inn so these are all of the levels now i do this and again in dungeon alchemist so you're going to have your file these are mp4s uh i typically use webms so i'll go ahead and import them i may have to change them but make sure you grab your json files to go with it and it'll all be the same file name so i'm just going to copy all of those copy we're going to go back into our foundry folder our data folder our modules folder and we're going to scroll down to the jagged edge in we're going to go into resources we're going to go into scenes and i'm going to paste all of that in the scenes folder now this is important you want to put all of your item material in your module folder okay we're going to open our world back up okay and we're back at our first scene so when you use dungeon alchemist in particular you have to make your scene <clears throat> right click on it import your data okay you have to choose your file now the file you want to go to the, your uh, desktop folder that you made within founder so we're doing desktop we're going to scroll down because I've got a list of folders. Founder shortcut. Okay, we're going into our data folder. Our modules folder. The jagged edge in. Resources. Scenes. And now see, you're only able to view your JSON files. So we're going to ground floor and it's ground floor because we're in the u.s i know some of the <laughs> canadians and british use first floor but that's okay we're going to open that file we're going to import it so now if you look right away you can see we've got this shadowy artwork here on our map and what i did by importing it it imported the sounds or not the sounds it imported the lighting the walls and the doors because dungeon alchemist automatically puts them in which is great and you know, that is a lot of lighting so once we do that then we go up go into configure we open up our background image file path. We come down our list, we go to modules. We scroll down to the jagged edge in. We go to our resources, our scenes, and we're working on, so you see now you, all you can view is your video files. So we're working on the ground floor. import it save changes okay and if you look with dungeon alchemist excuse me i'm a little gooey today 
We're going to zoom in here on the kitchen cauldron. You can see we've got some animation going here from the steam and smoke um, out of the cooking pot. We've got our lighting in place, and it separates the layers, basically, is what it is. Um, now, I also use Dungeon Draft. Uh, it just depends on what you're making and how you're doing it. So this is the ground floor. So we're going to create a scene. Another question mark. Doesn't matter what you name it. We're going to close it off. Oh, one more thing I forgot. On our configuration scene, we're going to go to grid. We're going to make it gridless. Save changes. Now, this I made a long while back. And I can already notice, we get this save off of here. The quality when you zoom in on an MP4 is granular. Now, bear in mind, I am using a older, I've got a good computer, but I've got an older video card. Uh, so my graphics capability is a little bit lacking. So... What we're, I'll probably do before publications change this and go to a WebP or a WebM. WebM has a, a lot better video. Uh, but back to our deal. So we're going to do the same process. We're going to right click. We're going to import our data. We're going to choose our file. First floor, open, import. And pull our map down, kind of zoom in a little bit. Now we've got the overlay of our lighting doors, walls on the second floor, or first floor, second floor. So we're going to open that one up. Do our background image. First floor. Select file. And while I'm in here, we're going to change the gridless and I'm sitting here looking at my pixels so that's at 50 uh, with a WebP it's usually 150 so that's definitely why it's granular so I will change these this is uh, the second floor um, you can see I've got the second floor at the end is designed for sleeping quarters rooms uh, hallway lighting so and I definitely in my case this when I exported these files I had all the lighting turned on um, it should all be turned off because I don't leave the lighting in the rooms on when no one's in it I do the hall lighting however so it's a potato potato deal. We're going to go ahead and create our last scene. Question mark. We're going to import our data. And we're going to go to the last floor on our JSON file. And when we click on that, we have uh, the overlay. Go ahead and configure our scene, our background image. And since once you've chosen the, uh, the scene location, again, you're in your module, Jagged Edge in, in my case, in scenes, second floor, select, gridless, save changes. And there's the third floor. So we got first floor. Second floor, third floor. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so this is going to be video one of our series. I think this is a good place to halt. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, and we'll continue on. Appreciate you sticking around. 
and hope to see you back.